Brian, I don't know if you're at the beginning, we'll give you 10 minutes to speak, and at eight minutes, uh, Tom will give you a warning that you have two minutes left. Okay. And then we'll have five minutes for questions. We'll go through the judges, and then we'll, when we're out of questions, we'll let the audience ask okay. some questions, okay? My name is Ryan Estrada. I'm in the B Division, and today we're going to be talking about uh, top tracking devices for competition rocket launching. Uh, with current with current technology, is it, it my uh, my hypothesis is with current technology, is it possible and affordable to use a tracking device and on competition rocket models without harming the rocket flight outcome? In my home state of New Mexico, we have many thermals. If you are lucky to catch one, you run the risk of losing your rocket as well as losing your great time or altimeter. I wanted to be able to add a tracking device to my rocket or glider that would not affect the outcome of the rocket flight and be able to find the rocket once it landed. My research background. Reasons I chose this research project. Since beginning the hobby of sport rocketry, I have lost numerous altimeters, rockets, gliders, as well as lost points during regional competitions. Too many to count. During our last regional, we lost sight of the rocket due to smoky sky conditions. The rocket contained my last altimeter. My grandfather launched a sea flexman glider during the final regional for the 2017 competition year. It landed over two miles away. After many hours of searching in the 100 degree heat, he did eventually find the glider. It turns out it was 30 yards away from where he had originally searched hours earlier. Objectives of the work. This leads me to think of a way I could electronically track my rocket and not lose valuable time or valuable items used, to competition rock used for competition rocket flying. The approach taken. I started looking into GPS tracking systems. Our family would go on geocaching expeditions looking for specific points of latitude and longitude to find small treasures in log books. Would there be a way to put a small tracking device on a rocket that would send me the GPS coordinates once landed? Equipment and facilities used. I scoured the internet and found many GPS devices available. I used a popular search engine to locate the devices below. By using a popular online shopping website, I could keep shipping costs down and prices comparable. Here's a summary of the four devices. The first is the TrackR Bluetooth tracking device. I have an example here for the judges. Uh, this tracking device uses other TrackR apps on your mobile cell phone to determine the exact pinpoint of the rocket. The cost was $26 and the weight is 0.3 ounces. The second one I have that is not on the table I mean, that is on the table, but I do not have the other two tracking devices. The next one is the TileMate. Uh, this one, it uses other TrackR apps just like the first one it, to pinpoint the exact location. This is $25, and it weighs 0.2 ounces. TrackR Bravo, this is that, that I have an example of. This one is the second GPS tracking device I found. The third is and the last one. The results obtained. Because my research did not produce the results I was hoping for, the the tracking devices I have were not small enough for competition rocketry that I was hoping for. Um, they're either too bulky, uh, don't fit in most of the rockets we use, or um, way too much. Because my research did not produce the results I was hoping for, it led me in a different direction. My parents own a small grocery store. The inventory has barcodes to track items purchased and sold. I thought of a large department store we shop at and how they use small fle flexible tags to track valuable inventory that leaves the store. 
These tags are called RFID tags, or radio frequency identification tags. RFID labels are mostly used in library management and inventory management. The readers use electromagnetic fields to identify and track tags attached to objects. The tags have an adhesive back and are flexible. Although they are not waterproof, they can withstand temperatures from negative 13 degrees Fahrenheit and 122 degrees Fahrenheit. And an individual tag weighs about 0.8 ounces. An example of how much 0.8 ounces is a single balsa nose. These are some examples of RFID tags. Uh, these tags are received unprogrammed. You must have an UHF or ultra high frequency reader with the right capabilities. I found a reasonable price writer made by Jitalk. It is a double USB desktop UH UHF RFID reader and writer for $110. That, I believe, is on the next slide. By using this writer, I can program as many tags as needed as often as needed. Because it, all, because it is also a reader, it can be used to find the tags. I believe that's the picture of the reader and writer. Once I securely place the RFID tag inside the nose cone portion of my rocket and launch, the tag will emit a radio signal that I programmed using my UHF reader and writer. I found that having the RFID tag inside the nose cone is the best placement for additional weight, as well as protecting the tag from the ejection charge. If the adhesive that comes on the tag isn't strong enough, super glue can be used without affecting the readability of the tag. The signal emitted is at 902 to 928 MHz or 865 to 868 MHz frequency range. Once the rocket has landed, I can use my UHF reader to locate the rocket. I will head in the direction of the line of sight where the rocket really? landed for better accuracy. The UHF reader has a distance of 25 meters, uh, or 800, oh no, 82 feet, or 27.33 yards. The area equation, I use the area equation to determine how wide of a diameter I have with my reader. And if the radius, I figured the radius, of, so the equation is pi times the radius squared. So I got pi times the radius, which was 27 meters, I mean 27 yards. Get the math, and it came out to 2,345 yards. So that's the square, or the circumference of the yard, the area of the yardage I have. So my rocket is in that area. The first four tracking devices researched were not usable for competition rocketry because they either weighed too much, did not track far enough, could not be easily placed inside the rocket, or cost too much. Two minutes left. The RFID tags are a better option for competition rocketry. Although they are a little more expensive, they are smaller and have a further tracking surface area. Although you cannot track the exact pinpoint location, you can get within a 27 yard diameter to hear the beeping in order to locate your rocket. By using triangulation and pinpoints, I can quickly and easily locate my rocket. Another bonus is you can attach an RFID tag to the rocket and help easily find it. My grandfather would have saved hours in the heat if he had had an RFID tag on his letter. Probably a good sender. safety implications of that because tracking rockets in the middle of summer in New Mexico, I'm thinking would be um, so good. Um, when, you, when you show the, the different types of RFID tags, one of the, one of the uh, images was of a, of a whole or roll of the things, which I suppose for inventory control. So that's something you could program a whole bunch of for your whole collection, your whole club. What, what, what kind of cost are we looking? Did, 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 you, did you rattle off the cost and I just missed it? Uh, I didn't say the cost. I think it was about ten dollars for the entire roll, so that's pretty cheap. The only thing that uh, is costly is the reader, which is a hundred dollars, hundred and ten dollars. So that's the only thing. 
but you could easily put all those on the rockets and not spend too much money on them. Thank you. I'm still listening. I just want to calculate. I'm mean, following up on the area calculation, but please. Okay. You said that the, each of the tags weighs 0.8 ounces? Uh, yes. And how much did these things weigh? I think those weighed 0.3 on the data sheet, but... I think you mean uh, 0.8 grams. Yeah, they might be different. I Do might have messed up the data. Do you have tags here? No, I didn't because of... Uh, the shipping, they came from China, and it would have taken, if I'd ordered them when I did my R&D, which was the end of June, it would have taken them two months to get here because of shipping, so I couldn't. So you've never actually tried these on no, the No, I have not tested yet. on the rockets. Okay. Do you actually have the $110 thing? No. Not yet? Not yet. Are you planning to get it? I, for further research, I plan to, yes. Do you know if the, the company makes higher power transmitters and receivers than this little one you showed us? I think, the, I think they, I think that was the highest reader. Um, it connects to a laptop, so you have that, and it connects and reads. It has to be connected to a laptop to work. Um, I think that's the highest frequency that was available. Okay. Um, yeah, can, when you you said you could triangulate when you when you get a signal, what what does it have on the reader or the output? Does it does it beat that view? Does it? Yes. And if you're facing away, does it get fainter? If you walk or outside the so if you're in within 27 yards, then it will beep. Mm -hmm. So you, if you walk, what you do is if you when it first beeps, you know you're in the 27 yard radius. So if you walk and you're outside of that, then it'll beep. It won't. It'll stop beeping. So you can triangulate and you can turn around and go try to get it. Yes. Yeah, figure out where. Okay. That's what I was calculating. That that circle you described is just under half an acre. That's what I was. I was figuring. So yeah. That's pretty it's, good. Yeah. Okay, um, Chris. Um, a couple of questions might help with your research. Also, um, those are not GPS trackers. The GPS tracking is done by your phone. Those yes. communicate with the phone, and the phone says, "Hey." I'm here and I saw one of these things. Yes. So they would never work for rocket tip, but the RFID is fascinating. I didn't know they had such a large range. So you have not actually tested to see if these will actually read 27 yards? No. Okay, because RFID, the tag, does not have a power source. The, your, that little reader writer projects an EM field which energizes a coil in the tag which gives it the power to then transmit a signal back. That's why I think mm -hmm. That would be amazing if it goes 27 yards. I hope you do further research on that. Any other questions in the audience? Okay. Yeah, uh, this, this is awesome. I'm a big fan of RFID tags, so thank you for introducing them to model rocketry. But it, it just seems like it only uh, solves the, there's two parts to the problem. There's like the first thousand yards, and then there's the last 28 yards. Yeah. And you solve the last 28 yards, which most of the time is what we need. Right. So, do you recommend that uh, flyers of parachute duration models that are also going to have a problem with the first 10,000 yards to have two devices, an RFID tape, and maybe something else that gets them close? I have, I have not done a lot of research about that. My primary focus was on I don't know of any other items that I couldn't find any other items that might help the RFID tags with the best bet. Yeah, last year, there was a whole bunch of friends of mine lost rockets with very expensive devices that didn't work. Yeah. So uh, that's it, yours is not an expensive device. Exactly. <laughs> so at least if it doesn't work, it's cheap. <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, thank you. Yes. I'm kind of curious on the. I guess it depends on what event you're flying, but what's too heavy for a tracker? Because there are uh, small modules that are LoRa radio based. It's a spread spectrum radio transmission technology that goes, uh, can go miles line of sight, like your uh, coin out, like Internet of Things, parking meters, these, these uh, radios. I was, and I'm I, wondering if that's too, or like five grams or something. So yeah. is that too I much? Was, what I was thinking about this, I wanted something that would stick, that was flexible, for yeah. like a, say, for this competition, a flex wing. Yeah. 
I can put it on the nose and my the front part of my flex wing and not have to worry about it like being bulky or so that was the main thought. Okay, that's it.